our focus today is going to be on measuring the phase noise of mixers and frequency converters, particularly ones with an internal or embedded local oscillator. But we'll also do a residual measurement where the PNA will supply both the RF input and the local oscillator signal. So for the first demo, we're going to start with an introduction of the new phase noise application. And here you can see it's a measurement class, which I choose and I can create a new measurement class. And with all the measurement classes, we have the setup tabs, which allow us to set up the measurement as we need it. It has all the information in a convenient place. I'm going to set the carrier frequency to 10 gigahertz. The carrier threshold will give us a warning if we don't measure a signal above that threshold, and we can change that if we like. Here we have the offsets. I'm going to change the start offset to 100 hertz, stop offset of 10 megahertz. The RBW ratio sets the uh, percentage of span around each uh, measurement offset. So, for example, if it were at a megahertz, we would use a 10% RBW to characterize the noise at that region. The FFT averaging factor allows us to do multiple averages in the FFT space before we do the data processing, and that allows us to have less jitter in the phase noise, with the trade-off being the more averaging we do, the longer it takes to do the measurement. And finally, under the noise mode, we have fast, normal, and best. These relate to the floor of our measurement system. We can lower the noise floor at the... Um, trade-off of also measurement speed. So depending upon the oscillator that you're trying to measure it, if you have a very low phase noise oscillator, you might want to choose the best mode for that. The RF path tab allows us to choose which receiver we use. I've got the field fox as a source going into the port four. So that would be the B4 test receiver. We can also change path configurations and change receiver attenuators. Normally we can accept up to about 12 or 15 dBm of power without overloading the receiver. If you have higher than that, you should add the receiver attenuator. The source tab allows us to set up sources, and this is very convenient if we're trying to make mixer measurements. If the mixer has its own internal local oscillator, we'll need to set up one of the sources as a drive source so that we can drive a signal through it. Or if we're doing residual measurements on mixers, we might set up both a source and an RF source and an LO source. The next three tabs are analysis setup tabs. The spurious allows us to do spur analysis. I'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, integrated noise is one of the measurement applications that we can do. It's not often used with phase noise measurement, so I'm going to skip discussing that. And finally, there's the spot noise table, and it will allow us to uh, generate a, essentially a list of phase noise at different offsets, and I can choose to add my own offsets if there's some particular place, for example, 25 kilohertz. If I apply this and say OK, I'll see my first phase noise measurement. You can see under the measurement key, the spurious table show up here. I can turn on the spot noise table if I want, and I can look at all the phase noise. A common place to look is at the 10 kilohertz offset, and I can also use markers to do the same thing. So I'll use a marker at 10 kilohertz. And once again, for my old eyes, I can turn on the marker display and make it a large marker readout. So I can move the marker anywhere along the trace. You can see we have a lot of jitter on this trace. There's three different ways we can improve the jitter. The first way is we can increase the FFT averaging factor. So there I set the averaging factor to four. And, of course, the measurement slows down. It doesn't slow down exactly four times, but about that amount. But the jitter is greatly reduced. Another way to reduce the jitter is we can use sweep averaging. There's no limit to the sweep averaging. The FFT averaging is limited by our memory size. So if I go four sweep averages, then it'll average subsequent sweeps. And they are very similar in their data processing scheme. It's just one of them will give you a single sweep average, and the other one you'll have to take a number of groups to get the average. Then the final way to improve the noise is uh, something that you'll also see on the X apps in the UXA, and that is to use a trace smoothing. So we could turn on smoothing, and that gives us a smooth trace. I'll turn it off here, and if we want to replicate the phase noise measurement that we see on a UXA, it usually sets up two traces. 
a uh, trace that is a normal trace and then a trace that is a smooth trace. So I can go to this uh, blue trace and I'll turn it on to be smoothed. And now I can see the smooth trace and the underlying raw data trace as well. Finally, we can look at some other measurements that we can do. One of the measurements we can do is we can choose also to look at an AM measurement. So we can look at AM and phase noise at the same time. And of course, because I'm averaging, I'll restart the averaging for the AM measurement so it doesn't average in um, phase noise into it. And the AM has what looks like a spur. So if we were to turn on spur analysis, and we can go to the analysis key, spurious and noise table, and turn on spurious measurements. And that will show us, if we put a marker on that, search max. That shows us the DBC level effectively of that spur, if it was a double side band AM spur. The spurious uh, signals are characterized by looking at the three standard deviations from the noise floor around the spurious. And you can change that number to whatever standard deviation number you like. So that's a quick look through the user interface for the phase noise measurement class. Here we see the spur tables, and here we see the spot noise table. In the next demonstration, I will show how this compares to the UXA, and then follow on, we'll do some real measurements on real mixers.